Hey guys, Brian Hare here from FreeSalonEducation.com and I'm coming at you with a brand new video. This time it's a full makeover, start to finish. I got my friend Sarah, who just got married a little while ago. So for the past year and a half, she's been growing her hair out so that it would be nice and long for the big day. Now that the big day is coming and gone, it was time for a big change. So she was really, really awesome and she let me do it all on film for you. So we sat her down, we did a really great balayage, making sure that we toned it to give it that great bronze effect that's very current, it's very hot right now, and it's something that a lot of us can use actually in the salon on our guests because it gives them that taste of fun dimension without necessarily going to a super, super light place that's gonna make them uncomfortable. Uh, after that, we went in and did a really cool undercut, textured chop of a super PC bob. We wanted to give her something that would be professional enough for work, but young and flirty and fun, just like she is. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Here it is. And away we go. I got her sectioned off here. Um, just so that I could go ahead and take off some of the unnecessary length, because I know I'm going to be doing a hand painting. So I would rather have the hair generally in a similar length to where we're going to end up. Just that way, I, as I paint my sections, it's going to be a little bit more realistic. So went ahead, did a fun little dry cut. Plus, she wanted to donate the hair. So I had it all in nice rubber bands for her and got it ready to go. Uh, just a little heads up uh, on this video. You'll notice as we get a little bit further into it that I have sped up the speed because when it comes to the balayage, I... Uh, I am basically doing the same application technique, just on different sections of the head. So I have my sections all, you know, planned out so you can see them. It's just going to be sped up a little bit because I am applying it the same way every time. Uh, you'll also notice in this video that my mouth is moving and sometimes I even reference the camera, but you can't hear anything. And that's because I was unaware that I didn't turn the microphone on. So you're getting a voiceover video instead. So all that's out of the way. Here we go. Uh, I have her sectioned off based on her on her actual part where she wears her hair because that's where I like the highlights to live. That's how she's going to part it. That's how she's going to wear it. So I want to make sure that it looks its best. And I think that's going to be a really a really uh, successful way to set yourself up is to go off of their actual part. So since this is going to be an undercut, I'm not starting down at the nape of the neck because I know that all of that hair is going to be removed in the haircut. So I started up at what's going to be actually left after her cut, and I know that it's going to be right around this area here. So I'm taking sections that are flat on the top and actually dip down a little bit, almost like drawing a triangle, an upside down triangle on the scalp and then pulling that section straight out from the head because I'm painting these framed pieces at the top of the, uh, the triangle section. What that's going to do when I let go of the hair and lay it down, that hair underneath is going to buckle, which is going to create, I don't know, a nice little cushion so that my sections will not press too hard on the sections underneath it. wanting to give her a little bit more of a, a lived-in feel here. So you can see not all of these sections are going to go straight down to the root because while I want to give her lots of dimension and movement throughout this color, I want it to also look very potentially natural. <laughs> we know it's not her natural color, but I don't want people to look at her and go, whoa, there's a big color job. I want it to look like maybe she just spent a lot of time in the sun and has a little bit more light of a natural base. So I'm using the perforated saran wrap that you can buy from uh, Candy Shaw's Sunlights company. I absolutely love it because it does help just to make sure that all my hair stays separate so there's no bleeding and it also just helps to create a nice little environment in there so that your lightener doesn't dry out or anything like that. It's, uh, it's really become a lifesaver because I can't rip saran wrap to save my life. So having those nice perforations in there make it much faster, much more successful, much easier to handle. So I definitely recommend picking some of that up. 
uh, yeah, the Sunlights Company. Very easy to find online. And they have different lengths. I know that they, uh, they made it so that if it's, you're to actually hold it the other way, so that, like, I held, I put it on there the long ways, very vertically. It's meant to use horizontally. It's just force a habit. That's what I started doing, and so that's, for some reason, what I continue to do. So here we go. We're working into it. You can see this is where I've started to speed up the sections a little bit um, just because, like I said, it's still the same application. It's just moving around the head, and I did want you to be able to see the full application but didn't want you to have to sit here for you know, the whole 40 minutes that it took me to put this color on. So to describe the application, uh, to go with the visual here, as I'm elevating that hair nice and high, I get my product on the tip of my brush and I start it around the middle of the section and sweep the color downward as I move up towards the scalp. The reason for that is because that's what helps to, to push that product down, which, you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but balayage is French for sweeping. So think of just doing this in a sweeping motion. You're sweeping the lightener down while moving up the hair, which helps to taper off the section a little bit so that, you know, if you wanted to, you could have a much finer section up near the head. Um, you know, it helps in highlighting and just creating, you know, whatever kind of look you're going for. I also get a lot of questions. People say that these look like very large sections and aren't I worried about uh, having too chunky of an end result. And actually, because of the product that I'm using, I'm not scared of that at all. I'm using, uh, again, Candy Shaw, I'm using the Sunlight's Balayage Lightener. And I'm a really big fan of it because it's got a consistency that you just can't beat. It's, it's a clay-based lightener. So it just grabbed onto the hair wherever you put it. It's not going to swell. It's not going to get weird. And using larger sections like this are actually completely fine because that clay base and that consistency, as it clings to the hair, it helps to almost diffuse itself. So, you know, it's it, it adds a little bit of extra style to what you already do. So I put that nice big fat section on there, but it's going to diffuse itself away and not be too stripey or harsh of a look. It's a really, really superior product. You definitely got to check it out if you haven't played with it yet. Again, make sure that elevation is nice and high. There's a technique that I use that I, I often refer to when I teach about balayage. And it's called Force Perspective. If you've watched any of my other videos, you've heard me talk about it before. It's, uh, it's a technique used in art. Everything from paintings and drawings to architecture, architecture, and now we use it in hair, and I'm just calling it out. Uh, force Perspective is when you create three dimensions on a two-dimensional plane by having you know your lines come together. <clears throat> it's a very crude description of it, I think, but if you think of a long hallway and you've got the two lines that are on either side of the floor and the two lines that are on either side of the ceiling, if you stare straight down that hallway, eventually those four lines come together. That's what forced perspective is, and that's how we're creating a nice seamless balayage in the hair. Um, I have those two lines on the outside that... <clears throat> just seamlessly come together down at my fingertips. I'm not forcing them together by just painting across the hair. I'm letting them naturally come together where that hair is pinched in my fingers. So what that does is that helps to create a very nice, soft, seamless transition from her darker root color into those lighter ends. So whether I choose to just do the outsides or like you see here, actually paint a line down the middle of the inside, it really is just a matter of how light I want her to be. That's one of the great things that I love about balayage is you can look and see exactly you know what's going to be lightened. You're looking at the hand painting yourself. So you can see, you know, do I need to cool it on the next section because I just put a lot of blonde in or do I need to pick up the pace? You know, it's whatever whatever you want this end result to be. 
as you see, I come in one very important area for me is to always make sure you get that little sideburn area because, you know, this day and age, people pull their hair up constantly, whether it's for work or for the gym or to get it out of their face or whatever. That's a very common thing is women need to pull their hair up and have their hair still look good. What I like about balayage is it doesn't give too harsh of an end result. So you can get right in there on the hairline. And so long as you get that angle down when she pulls her hair back, it's going to still be highlighted without being too harsh. So I lifted up that sideburn section and actually painted the underside of it because I want to make sure that that pop, you know, happens when the hair goes up as well. As I work around the face, I always make sure that the sections closest to the hairline on the face go as close to the head as possible because in all actuality, were this a strictly sun lightened effect, that would be the lightest. It tends to be finer hair, so it gets really light in the sun. If you think of like a, a small child, like a little girl who just spent all summer running around, that hair around her face is going to be so much lighter. And that's really the effect that we're trying to create by, by painting this in. I wanted to make sure that I get lots of blonde around that face because I did put quite a bit in the back there. So I, I, I really kick it up an extra notch as we get to the front of the head. As we finish up, make sure as you get up around the top of the head that you're still paying attention to elevation. You know, holding it straight towards your chest isn't the same elevation anymore because now you're at the top of the head. So really focus on making sure that you, you get that hair up there, get that lift so that, you know, you have a nice even consistency throughout the entire job that you're doing there. Again, start framing that section, going the, the outsides of the triangle, letting the lines naturally come together at my fingertips. I use the paddle also from Sunlights. Thank you, Sunlights, for making this so easy for me. Uh, I use the paddle to hold it so that I can make sure that I get those ends perfectly saturated and covered because I really want her to just be light. We're going for that bronze, so you got to do it all. My favorite pieces to do are those pieces right at the part, right around the face, whether they've got bangs or just layers around the face. I love it because that's always in my opinion, supposed to be the lightest. I always refer to them as the Sarah Jessica Parker pieces because if you look at her, as long as she's been a blonde, that's always where the highest concentration of her blonde is. Even there are times she's got dark hair but still has those pieces right on the part, right around the face, super light. It makes a world of difference, which is also why it's very important, again, to go off of their part. If it's somebody that says, oh, well, my part moves around, well, then ask them where it tends to be the most or go with where it, it was when they walked in. Play it safe. Play it smart. We know how this works. Again, creating that center line to really make sure. And see, you look there. You see that negative space, that dark hair. That's going to be the dark to lightened ratio when she's finished. This section, I really wanted to make sure that it was ultra saturated. So I even lifted it up and went underneath because more than wanting this piece to diffuse out, I wanted that top piece right on the part to be really light. So I let it pierce through on both sides. Let me lay it down, do that front favorite piece of mine. I wanted to use the GoPro on this so that you guys got a little bit of a POV. I know not everyone loves the GoPro angle, but it's something I don't see a whole lot of, so I wanted to offer it. If you don't like it, close your eyes, I guess, until you get to the parts that aren't GoPro. But I wanted you to see because, you know, there's so many angles that are so important in this, and now you guys get this angle to see how high I'm lifting the hair. And you've got the GoPro angle to see at what angle I'm painting onto the section. So now there's options. This I just went ahead and sped way up because, again, I'm, I'm not doing anything crazy different than I've done on the entire rest of the head. And these are just the last couple of sections. 
Uh, I processed her. The other good thing about the cellophane, I processed her until it looked done, until I knew that it was light enough for me to tone it. Um, I, I do mention it later. I used the Paul Mitchell PM Shines 9A as her toner because I didn't want to completely eradicate the warmth, but I wanted to get rid of the unnecessary brassiness. Like the, I wanted to tone down the oranger tones and, you know, not really, I didn't, I didn't want to make it an ashy overall color. I just wanted it to be a nice natural warmth. It is fall when we're doing this. So, you know, I wanted to leave some behind so that, uh, it still looked really pretty and seasonally appropriate. Come winter and spring, we'll probably go even lighter, but this was the first step. So now we've got a nice little package. She's all wrapped up. We can see through the cellophane and we're going to move into a very sped up haircut, but I wanted to make sure that you guys could see it. Um, I just sectioned her off again, pretty much the same way that I did for her, her color. Her undercut, I'm using the Donald Scott razor, the carving comb. It's one of my favorite tools ever for doing razor cuts. I decided what was going to be her undercut based on her density. And I'm pulling the sections straight out from the head and just cutting it right off nice and close, like a, a layer really. So that way it will hug her head nice and tight. And it actually grows in very gently, very forgiving, but it's going to take away so much bulk so that I can give her the appearance of, you know, a closer to one length sort of bob. Her hair is too thick to pull that off. So this is how we cheat. See the angle that I'm holding that at, holding it at that angle and then cutting with a razor doubles up on giving you a little bit of a soft graduation. I'm not trying to create so much of a stacked look as much. I am really just trying to take and shift that weight line up a little bit so that it doesn't sit like a heavy, heavy triangle. So you can see as we move into the front, I sort of, I was just eyeballing to continue that, that angle going, cutting on top of my fingers, just using that razor, just to carve that out of the, this is really just the foundation of the haircut. I went in and did a lot of dry cutting to really, really create you know, the cool pieciness of this chopped you know, bob. So just checking myself. I blew her out nice and dry. I did tons and tons of tease cutting. I mean, I went through and just tease cut it like crazy. Matt's got a couple videos on tease cutting if you need that broken down for you. I went through, I probably went through her entire head two or three times because I just, I wanted to shatter that bob so much that I really just, you know, it, it's an eyeball kind of thing. You look at it, you do it a few times, you see if that section has enough. You, it's, it's like sculpting, doing the dry cutting and the tease cutting. You see what areas need the attention and you give it to it. So, That's try that again. All right. So here she is, the final product. She's now been balayaged, olaplexed, toned, cut, undercut, blown out, and she's pretty happy. She's sitting here checking herself out hard while Hi. she was getting ready. So as you can see, it sort of, that color lives in that realm of, do we consider it blonde? Do we consider it brown? Which is the definition of blonde, which is very in right now. Uh, to tone her, I just used, she lifted to a pretty golden, a slightly orange in places, but probably in that eight, anywhere from eight to 10 range, depending on what, uh, whether the color had, was previously lightened or not. So I went in with a sheer, actually it's Paul Mitchell's PM Shines 9A because I knew that it was gonna be sheer and I knew that their ash was a very, stout blue base that was going to take care of the oranges but leave me some of the golds that I wanted to make sure were left behind so it still looked natural and not too ashy to give it that bronze feel and if you check we've got our nice little undercut under there it's her little secret so we've got this fabulous look let's give her a spin so you can see the full thing look at that smile <laughs> and she's happy as can be and the last the final thing that we checked she can still get it into a teeny tiny little ponytail. So she's happy as can be. So there it is. We're going to style her up with a couple more looks for you so you can see it with a little bit of the tousled curl. You've seen it straight. So thank you very much. Be sure to subscribe to us uh, right here on YouTube. Check us out at freesaloneducation.com. 
Check me out on Instagram. My name is Hairstyle with an E. Uh, thank you very much. We'll see you soon.